We greet everyone that's here. We thank the Lord God for allowing us to be here in the church of God. That God allows us to sing ourselves together. I am grateful. I am thankful. I am blessed in the Lord. I thank God for this day. You know, I woke up thinking about uh, uh, something that would, that would remind me on my mind. I'm going to start off with, before I get into the service. I'm going to start off giving a story about a testimony about our life. Of what happened to me and also happened to my wife at the same time. So it started off, I was thinking about the time and it kept coming to my mind to think about this before the, before the time of the hurricane season started. I had a moment that I was thinking about this years ago about the situation between Hurricane Katrina. And I was thinking about how it all started, how, how we was reacting at the moment when the storm begins to, you know, coming on its way. And it starts off, we kept hearing on the news, the storm was coming. We kept hearing them, kept saying, we don't know which direction. We don't know where the storm going to land. But they kept saying, storm is coming. And so we got there and we began to try to, you know, calm ourselves down, not knowing what direction the storm may go. So we just kind of going to buckle down and just see what we can do and try to hang in there for the moment. And so what we was under, a lot of people don't know the difference, and some do, is a thing called the the watch, and there's a thing that's called the warning. The watch is something to tell you, be prepared just to know a storm may be coming in your direction. So that's the watch, and that's the thing that we was doing. We was watching, because we didn't know what direction the storm may come. So we decided to say, let's go to, uh, let's go to my mom's house, and we're just going to sit there. And so they kept saying the storm is on its way. We don't know what direction it may land and start up. I remember it was, remember it was at a stage of a category two. And then as it kept swirling so more and more and getting to the, in the Gulf, it became a hurricane five all of a sudden. Not everybody began getting the thing. It moved from a watch to a warning. And it said the storm is on its way to New Orleans. It said it's directly headed in our direction. Now, at that time, we were still there. So when we were still there, we didn't know what to do because why? Let me tell you something. My wife, was, she's from Florida, but I'm from New Orleans. We've been hearing about the watch for a long time. The storm is coming. They kept telling us the storm is coming. They kept telling us so many times. We seen the rain, we seen the flood, but we didn't see nothing like as to a category that it made us so worried that we were going to get so scared. And so what happened was, I was thinking the same thing over the years. I remember in the kindergarten, the storm came. And when the storm came, it came and it hit. I remember it hit my classroom. And I remember in kindergarten, all our material flooded, went out to school. And we lost a lot of time because we had two level floors at the school I was in kindergarten. And we first grade, the kindergarten was on the first floor. And I remember, you know, my, 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 well, at the time, while he was alive, he was something like a dad. He came and he, caught, he pulled me on his back and he walked through the water because it was a flood. The flood was up to almost his, his waist. But we still got to the point where we got comfortable. We kept hearing about the storm. We, the reason why a lot of people did not leave because we heard it so many times we survived so many trials of storm that hit the city. And so it was like we wasn't worried until the point when it said it moved from watch to warning. And when it moved from the warning, it was kind of too late for us to do anything about it. Even the way it happened, the city wasn't prepared because then they told everybody at the last minute, time to leave. That's when the congestion on the road begins to happen because everybody's trying to leave at the same time. 
I remember I was talking to people, and people on the phone, I said, where you at? We're still in traffic. I said, you out the city? So no, we're still stuck. Traffic is moving too slow. And I was saying, wait a minute. I said, we were sitting there trying to figure out what we're going to do. And now that the storm is on its way, then the night came. And I remember we were in the house, at my mom's house. Then the lights went out. The lights went out first, before the storm came. It was a warning that you, you, you knew something was about to happen. So when the lights went out, that's when I know that's when we start getting kind of nervous. Because now, even though the storm was in there, we know something was about to happen in that moment. And so when the lights went out, that's when the storm came. The storm came by night. And I remember it started to shake the windows like it was about to break. And I'm trying to be a man and trying to like, keep my composure because I'm like, I don't know what to do. Because now I'm sitting here with a wife that's six months pregnant and now I'm trying to figure out, we we're, we're, we're only been married for a year, I'm trying to figure out how to fix this. And all I can do is trust the Lord. That's all I had. When the storm came out, we had nothing. We left everything behind. Then the lights came then the war came. It was the night lights, the wind, then the water. And when the water came, it started out very slow. And everybody still had that comfortable. It was like it may be like one of the times that we saw so many floods. It's going to go down. And like I told my mom, I said, I don't think that water's going down. Because I see it started over here. And now I moved over here around the building. My mom at that time when she was living, she was like, yes, it's going to go down because of the simple reason I know. And I was like, mom, I don't see it. I don't see it. It looks like for some reason that the water is going to keep coming. So she said nothing. We sat there in the house. It was hot because it happened uh, in August, like August 26th, 25th of 2002, uh, 2005. And we sat in the house. It was so hot that we begin to sleep, I don't know how what people call it, we slept on the porch. In New Orleans, you have a part where you go outside and we slept on the balcony. That we had the porch and the balcony, people sleeping outside. We was in the dark. That's before the water came. And so all of a sudden, there was so much noise. And we went to sleep. The next morning, we woke up. The water was down here just a little. What's the river? It was so much water. And the thing about it was, they warned us, but the thing about it, they wasn't prepared. They wasn't prepared because they never experienced a situation that, that was so terrible that they didn't know what to do. The officials wasn't ready. The politicians that was there, they wasn't ready. They was all stuck in the city. Everybody was stuck there. But the thing about it, we heard it. So I start off by saying this. This is going towards the church. We have been warned so many times that Jesus is coming. We've been hearing so much, we got to the point where we come at ease. We come relaxed. We come to the point we don't take it as serious as we used to because we heard it so many times. Just like in all, we heard the storm was coming, but we still stayed there. And on top of that, you gotta realize that why can't, why can't, I remember uh, this guy said, why didn't everybody leave? Don't you realize the city, majority of half the city did not have transportation? We all depended on RTA, real. We all depended on some kind of way getting around by somebody else had a ride. But Jordan and City did not have a ride and we got stuck there because some of the people could not afford a ride and so because they couldn't afford a ride, the storm caught them in a bad position. So it's just like us at the church. We hear it over and over again and to the point we don't be prepared for the storm. We don't be ready for when the storm comes. Because why? We got comfortable. And I, you know, every time we talk about it, we always talk about the state of the world. Let's talk, talk about the condition of the church. What is the condition of the church when Christ comes? Are we ready? Are we ready for when the storm comes? When Jesus comes? When he comes in the power? Are we ready to see his face? Are we ready? Are we going to be that one when he sins? We're going to run and hide. 
will be read. So let's turn to the we Start off with the scripture in the book of Peter. I believe. See the book of Peter chapter. Book of Second Peter. We're going to start off with Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 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 three. We're going to start with Second Peter chapter three, beginning at first one. Beloved, I now write unto you, and both which I stir up, your pure mind by way of remembrance. See, this is what he's trying to say. We get so relaxed, we get so comfortable, because we heard it. Because so many people miss abuse of Jesus coming that we don't get so stirred up. So Peter's telling you, I gotta stir your mind up again. You gotta realize. You don't know what day, you don't know what hour, but the thing about it, you need to be prepared. So I have to stir your mind up again. I got to put you in conscious of living in holiness. Now you got to understand, you don't know when the time is, but you need to be working on with the Lord. Be ready. What does the scripture say here? The servant of this, the Lord of God, now write unto you, and both which I stir up, your pure mind by way of remembering, that ye may be mindful of the word which was spoken before by the Holy Prophet and of the commandment of God, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffing. You hear that? In the last days. He said, Yo, it's like the prophets and the apostles. The, the, the prophets already told you. The prophets already told you to come in the Lord. The prophets already told you. It's like this. It's just like what happened with Katrina. The weatherman kept telling him the storm is coming. He kept telling us. He kept warning us. The thing about it, we just didn't have no preparation. He kept telling us it's on its way. We don't know a direction. It started as a watch and now the warning. The scriptures tell us watch and pray. They say the flesh is weak. The spirit is with it, but the flesh is weak. So it lets you know you can't depend on flesh to bring you through when it comes down when Jesus is coming. You're going to have to rely on the spirit of God. You're going to have to rely on the power of God. He said the prophets has told you. So it's just like this. The scripture talks about the prophet is like a newsman. He's like a newsman. It's a forecast. It was telling you the Lord is coming with vengeance. The Lord is coming to repay all those that didn't serve. He's coming down now to show you vengeance mindset, the Lord. The prophets have warned you, it's just like the newsman. He has told you, you keep sitting around thinking, nothing is not going to happen. Just realize this, the news has went out. No matter what you do, no matter if you don't prepare yourself, just know you've been warned. You've been warned. No matter what, it's up to you what you're going to do with the information of what you read in the scripture. You have been warned about Christ is coming. You have been warned. Don't you see the time? Nobody's fearing God. Nobody has the love of God. And even when he comes out to God, he even moves to the church where people are just showing up and showing their face. Long as I let everybody know I'm here. And nobody has a sincere love for God in his word. That was missing in the church. Now God is telling you, you have been what does scripture say, my brother? Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoff, walking after their own lusts, yes, and saying, Where is the promise of this coming? You hear that? For since the father fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Everybody's still doing what they've been doing. Amen. Nobody being moved. Nobody is thinking about their soul. It did not bother no one. Everything continued being what it's been. People still love wrong. People still love wickedness. People still don't want to get close with God. It's still the same. Nothing been changed since the fall of been sleep. Everything remains the same. Read my brother. But this thing willingly. The what? Are uh, ignorant. Willingly. That means you know. But you want to play stupid. Yeah. It's just like a kid. You know, you know you shouldn't be doing that. But when you come around and when somebody busts you, you want to play innocent. But guess what? It's too late because the scriptures have told you you know better. Yeah. You don't know. An excuse, old man. Whoever you are, know better. You know that something was.
knows about that. Yeah. Don't read my brother. But this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, yes, and the earth standing out of the water, and in the water. Yes, Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water and earth. That's right. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store. That's right. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and predict the prejudice of ungodly men. It's prepared as a fire. Let me tell you something. We may not be prepared, but God got to prepare for those that don't want to obey. Yes. He has a place ready, all set up. If we don't want to be in the place of God, God got a place for the ones that don't. So nobody, let me tell you, just like the star that the movie, whatever, it never saw, nobody can left behind. Even though if you don't make it to heaven, God got some place. You want to think about God? People don't understand. God like all. He like all. Why do you think the sun rises up when he does? Why do you think it, when, when it just ran at a certain time to see? Because God like all. So when he has the disobedience, you think he's just going to let you wander around? No, he has a place reserved for the disobedient. Those that don't want to follow God, guess what? He has an all in need place for you. You may not like it, but guess what? It's where we choose to be. What do you read, my brother? But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, mm. that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. That's right. Give me tell you about it. If you look at that, it's trying to tell you, time don't mean nothing to you. Yeah. Time, we need time. God don't need time. The reason why he has been merciful, because he knows that we need time. We need time to go to him. We need time to cry out. We need time to lean on Jesus. He has allowed the mercy because he knows he can wait us out until we can die, and then we can go on his way to hell. But because he's a merciful Slow to patient, loving kindness. He sits there and waits for us to decide to wants to follow him. He allows us to make the mistake and to realize that nobody in the world is like Jesus. He allows these, these errors for we can realize and say, you know what? I need to be saved. Yes. I, I tried everything else. I need to be saved. Thank God for his patience. Thank God for his long suffering. Because guess what? None of us is good enough. Because if it wasn't for his way, none of us would be here. He waited for us. He waited for us. When we didn't deserve it, he still died. He sent his beloved to shed blood that we have the opportunity to be saved. He blessed us to be here. Ain't nobody in here deserve the kingdom. Because we all have sinned and fall short. We all was wrong. But because of the mercy of God's patience, I thank God for his patience. I thank God for it. Because if it wasn't for the patience, like I said, we've been still out there doing what we did, doing what we doing nowadays. But God came in and had mercy. What is that? Read on, my beloved. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Yes. But his long serpent to us, not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to the See that? See what I said? That's what that means that time. He hoping that long, he, he's allowing us to go through yeah. that long suffering should lead us towards Christ. He suffered. He suffered when we do wrong. When we embarrass him. When we hurt him. He suffered. But that long suffering, he it brings into our life the hope that we come to repent. Some kind of way we should feel something about the sins in our life instead of being comfortable. This is how you know God is dealing with you because now you're looking at that sin in a different light because that long suffering had led you to repentance. We know, my brother. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. You hear that? And the elements shall melt with from a great noise. The night earth came. also. The night came. Yes. The night came. We was in that. The night came. Yes. The thief came. The noise came. Didn't know. Yes. The night came. It came with the thief in the night. Yes. He should have sun up in the shade. 
It's like somebody, but I thought said the wind is about to bust. That's how it's going to be before you know it. Christ is here. You can't do nothing about it. All you can do is just stand there and deal with whatever you do. Stand right there. The time is now. You had that moment. You had that opportunity. God gave you the grace. You just sat there and just kept living life. Going on, continue doing what you want to do. It's been like that from the beginning. Now the time is here. Read on, my brother. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with the great Noah, and the elements shall melt with permanent peace. That the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. You hear that? The storm is coming. Yeah. You've been warned. The prophets are like forecasts. You have to, they already yeah. told you. Be ready. Prepare. Now we do say something. They learned something from Katrina. They learned something. Because now somebody made a mistake. Now the city's more prepared. Because why? Somebody else had to go. Have we learned from somebody else sin and they died? In? We didn't learn nothing. We didn't learn nothing from people that's acting on God. Go through it to learn it. You don't have to know that sin is bad. You can see the effect of sin. You don't have to do something with everybody else does. Just look at somebody and learn. The scripture saying, Oh, I get it. Get understanding. Oh, I get it. Watch it. Watch it all you go. They die in misery. They rise up and think it's a joy, but they die without Christ. Your life means nothing without Christ. Do you hear me? You are considered a nobody when it comes down to standing for God if you didn't die in Christ. Do you hear me? The scripture said how precious the death of the saints. Not the sinner. Not the sinner. They said how precious is the death of the saints. That means if you didn't die in the Lord, that death was nothing. That means you had breath in your body. You live, die, and that's it. I don't want this living to be in vain. I don't want this living to be in vain. Well, I want to see his face. I want to say I live for you. I survived with all this stuff I'm going through for you. I've been here and I'm holding on because of you. I learned from my mistakes and some other people's mistakes. Didn't it just so tell you to see all these people out here making these things and errors without Christ? I don't know how. And I'm being honest. I do not know how can anybody live without Christ. I can't. I can't make it without him. Sometimes I can't take it without him. Sometimes I can't even go through the day without taking my heart. God, I need your help. I need you, Lord. I can't get it without I have the not the answers. I can't solve this without your help. I don't know how anybody. Once I found out who he is, I start to go to him more. I start to lean on him. I start to lean on him. But he has told us. He told us he's coming. He told us he's coming. And we someone just got relaxed. We got comfortable with it. We know my brother. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, mm -hmm. what manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversations and godliness? What 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 position are you gonna be in? Yeah. Are you gonna be with Christ? Are you gonna be still I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna do? Where are you gonna be? What, what state you going to be in when Christ comes? What position you're going to be playing? Is Christ going to be in your life? Or you just going to be living it without Christ? There is no living without Jesus. I don't care how much life you have. I don't care how much possession you have. You can have all you want. The scripture says it's good for a man. What is good for a man to gain the whole world of the soul? That means no matter what you have, when it comes down to being saved by Jesus. That's what we need not to All this, you think about it, all the stuff that we have, it's going to get burnt up. <laughs> all the things that you value, that you work hard for, that you felt so committed to, that you felt so dedicated, I got to go this. But you can put time on a job, but you can't put time 
time in prayer. I can put next, I got to, oh, I got to do some more time. I can get, you know, I can sit and watch Netflix all day long. But when it comes down to church, what time y'all get up? That's a question of humanity. What time y'all serve over? What time is y'all service over? But people can watch hours and hours. They can be on Facebook for hours and hours. They can be on Instagram for hours and hours. But when it comes down to something spiritual, they don't have time. Yeah. They don't have time. Let me tell you something. The world is too wicked to not have time for your spiritual life. It's too wicked and life is too short if you're not worried about your soul. It's more important than anything that you have. Any achievement you get, your soul is more important than everything that you have in this life. Read on, my brother. Look up uh, and hasten unto the coming of the day of God, where in the heavens being on fire That's right. shall be dissolved, and the element shall melt with firm heat. You hear that? Listen, listen, listen. It's telling you, you know what? Everybody, and this, you, you, you said we look. If you look at the scripture, it talks about we're looking. Everybody's not going to be running. Everybody's going to be milking when you come. Because why? They prepare themselves. They're going to be ready. I remember when we went out the city, we finally got out of the door. It's funny. The song, Jesus, 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 almost similar to what happened to us. The woman went to Baton Rouge. We went to Baton Rouge. They were bringing food in. We were saying Jesus, Jesus, we were like, Lord Jesus. <laughs> we were filthy, dirty, walking through mud, through water, and we were stank. We haven't had a bath in three, four days. We were just having to have shelter, just like the storm. But guess what? I tell you of the truth. The only thing that God would do, I would tell you the truth, I prayed. I felt myself about to lose my mind. And all I know is, what, what do I know? I know Jesus. I know how to pray. I kept, I was talking. My wife was talking to me. I was losing my mind. I didn't know what she was saying. I saw a mouth moving, but I couldn't understand what she was saying. And all I said, all I know is Jesus. I kept saying, Jesus. Jesus. Just like the song, I guess. Jesus. I kept saying, Jesus. Jesus. That's what's going to get you through the storm. If you don't have Christ in your life, that's what's going to get you through the storm. That's what's going to get you through the storm. God is coming. And we all better be ready for his coming. But now the church has been affected. We've been affected because why? We've been taught to love down here. Most preachers now they're preaching about this here. The Lord won't break. Don't you know some people get upset when they don't get blessing from God? They get by. But now our focus has been changed. But we don't realize this world won't be here forever. It won't be here forever. And we got to understand our soul is at stake. And we got to realize we can't get so caught up down here. Give me a um, the book of John. Book of John. First John in, uh, chapter chapter one. First John. First John, yeah. First John chapter two. First John chapter two. My little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. See that? We have assurance. Yes. If you mess up, we have insurance. The scripture said, when John saw Jesus the next day, he said, Behold, the man of God who take away the sin of the world. We have insurance. But the thing about it, we are not being so concerned about the insurance that we have. Jesus was our insurance to get in. He is the policy. He is the boss. But we don't know how precious Christ is. He is the thing that gets us in the house of God. He's the thing that gets us into the kingdom. He's the thing that brings us back to God. He reconciles us back to God. It's without Christ, we cannot make it in. We cannot make it in. Let's see. 
Try, drop down to verse 15. Love not the world. That's the problem with you. Neither the things that are in the world. That's right. If any man of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's the problem. You cannot love the world and God at the same time. Yes. That's a conflict. There's a conflict. Yes. The spirit wants against the flesh. There's a conflict. You ain't loving. You can't. It's a conflict because one does something different from the other. One is holy. One is unholy. He said, "You love the world. You can't love the Father." Well, we don't my brother. For all that is in the world, all the things of the flesh, lust of the flesh, the, the flesh the desire, the flesh desire. Right. You see, the problem with us. We don't want to go this way because it's a disciplined life. It's a changed life. We may get more no's than yes. The world has no restriction on their flesh. They're going to do what they want to do. They have no stop. They have no control. They're going to let the flesh rule them. We have something different in our life. We have God in our life. We have Christ that saved us. But when it comes down to the flesh, people in the world, that's the love of the world, they do what the flesh wants to do. And what else, my brother? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You see it? The lust of the eyes. That's what we look at. We look at everything out there instead of looking at everything in the scripture. What catches our attention is not God. What catches our attention is out in the world. We haven't come with the scripture saying vain imaginations. We not only just see what's out there, we also imagine the things of the world. It's like when we get to this house, we, we want to be like them. They had an effect on us. They had an effect on us. Not only that, we're going to talk on their pride. We come to a point where we become lovers of ourselves more than lovers of God. We have a problem. You know, every time they preach about, you know, when they preach about the end time, it always talks about the people out there. We have to be ready in here. We have to be ready in here. And that's the problem with people. Don't you know there's going to be some discipline? There's going to be something God's going to bring you to. And you got to be prepared. You got to be ready because the simple reason He's preparing you for the kingdom. He's preparing you. Give me on uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 11. This is what the problem I see with the church. 
the church have too much connection with him. They love with this too much. Sometimes this too much is preached too much. So much is preached the same thing. The scripture talks about how the, when, when Moses was gone for a long time, they thought Moses was dead. And so what they did, they talked and made an idol. They turned around and made an idol because they couldn't wait on what God did with Moses. And when Moses came down, he looked at him, he's like, he found them just having a fun time, enjoying it, getting caught in that. But the strength of sin, they rise up to pray. And let you know how serious it was a serious about the spiritual life. You better get serious about your spiritual life. You, you will not see the next minute. Put this in your mind. You may not see the next minute. You know how many people say, I just saw him, he died. I just spoke to her last night. I just said something to her. We just had a conversation. I just thought I was just talking to them. We take for granted of his long suffering towards us. We take for granted. We got a couple more scriptures to read. Give me all, uh, give me, give me uh, Matthew chapter 25. No, you know what? Give me Matthew chapter 20, 24, 24, 24, 30, 37, 24, 37. But at the day of Noah, that's it. No, let's go ahead. At, at the day of Noah, so shall also be coming of the Son of Man. Just remember, they continue. For at the, for at the end of days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, married and giving in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. See, look, look what it says. But as the day of Noah was word, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. But as the days it was before the flood, it was still the same. Nothing changed. You know how somebody sometimes think it has to be a, 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 a traumatic feeling? Something had to cause you to want to. Give your life to Christ. That's not always the case. They could always. You know how many people that saw bad experience and still didn't think about God. So it's not always tragedy that brings you to God. It's understanding. It's understanding. You have to have an understanding why you serve Him. You have to understand why you gave your life to Him. You have to have some kind of understanding. It's not just tragedy. People think, always oh, hear the story because of this. It's not just that. You have to have an understanding of why you serve. Yes. Just people just show up because of tragedy. You know what? That feeling of tragedy can fade away. Because the Lord, you know how many people, the Lord delivered something's mind out of something? You know how many times they did that? And then something after, after the tragedy of win and it subsided, after the tragedy of God, they're right back doing the same thing. So it's not just the tragedy, it's the understanding of who he is. It's not just tragedy, it's understanding of who he is. You got to have understanding. The flood didn't do it. I've seen somebody, and this is true, I, 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 I've been in church for a long enough. I saw somebody who been in so much tragedy. Gun went off, they got their legs amputated. They came in the church drunk, cursing everybody. So tragedy is not the only thing. It's your understanding of who it is. As long as you understand the tragedy and faith, but who he is and what he is will never change. He's the same. He's still the same. Everybody else may change. Everybody else may be funny. Everybody else not be a reliable. But he remains the same. Keep reading. For well, in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, married and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. 
So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. See that? Then shall two be in the field. Listen, they did not. They, they, they wasn't ready. They didn't prepare themselves. They knew it was something, but they never prepared themselves. They knew not. They didn't get ready for it. See, us, and when it comes down and explaining, the Lord to everybody else is going to be a thief to them. But up to us, it's going to be, thank you, Jesus, it's a blessing. You are here now. It's a difference looking at it. We're looking from the side of the ones that didn't follow Christ's side. We're not like that because why? God saved us. Because why? We submitted our life to God. It's totally different. When he comes, we don't have the same outcome or the same look as everybody else and say, oh my God, he's here. Oh my God, it's over. No, it's more like, thank you. All this trouble is me. All this pain is suffering. I don't have to worry about it. No more aches in my body. No more sick. I don't have to worry about it because the simple reason you are here to rest. Let's read out, my brother. There shall two feet in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. That's one. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. That's Watch one. therefore, but you know not what hour your Lord do the come. You know but know this, that if the good... See, I, I want to stay right there. Yes. See, you don't know what hour. And this is what the problem I see the other people. They got all these books. The Lord's supposed to see the six, six mean this, seven mean that. The Lord should be coming on February 2024. Do you know what? No man knows that. No man. You know all these people sitting up there, they prophesied, getting up and saying all these things. No man knows the hour. No man knows the time. And people are like, oh, the prophet, he's an anti-prophet. But he don't know the hour. If he act like he know the hour, then he's considered a false prophet because no man knows the hour. All we know is the sign. We don't know the hour. We don't know the time. People get caught. You know, it's so funny. Those same people that be talking about the end time, they don't have no connection with Jesus. All y'all just want to know, the Lord gave me this. The Lord gave me that. But do y'all have a connection with Jesus? Not really. I just tell you prophesy because that's what it gets me paid. Say, no man knows that. Keep reading, my brother. But know this. That if the good one of the house had known in what watch he would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready. But in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man comes. You think that? You don't know. You don't know. Now, let's, we, we come to the end. Matthew 25. Matthew 25, 31. Imagine uh, chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory. Hey, yo, he's here. He's here. Yes. He's here. He's in his glory. You did you crucified him, didn't stop him. Yes. He's in his glory. He's here now. Read on, brother. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory. And all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered, shall be gathered all nations. That's right. And he shall separate them. Everybody is coming. Everybody. No one can escape the judgment of God. All nations. Yes. It said all that God. Everybody. That's not only got everybody, it got generation after generation after generation. Everybody should stand before God. Nobody's going to get left out. Remember, you got a reserved spot for somebody, too. Everlasting is not just promised to us and with Jesus forever. Everlasting promised to those in that mission. What do you read here, my brother? And before him shall be given all nations. And he shall separate them one from another. And the shepherd divided his sheep from the goat. And, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand. He shall set the sheep on one side. But the goats 
You know what? That's that, that people that's in the church thinking they're sheep when they're goats. The reason why a goat do what he want to do. A sheep is a father. So a goat has his own understanding. I'm going to do what I want. I ain't going to obey nobody. I'm stubborn. A sheep is a father. And those that sit in the church, you can see them. You can sit around, and some people, just because somebody in church, doesn't mean they're a sheep that can be a goat. Because they can be just like the children of Israel. When they came out of Egypt, all they do is complain. Nobody does right. If that's the case, you complain that you need to take over. You take control. You sit down. You put, you put your life on it now. You put your money up. That's what the problem with the church. They have too many goats and not enough sheep. Too many disobedient than those that wants to be followers. Everybody wants to lead themselves and not let God lead. But when the end comes, it's going to separate. You read, my brother. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom of power for you. He said, Come, be blessed. Yeah. You hear that? He said, come ye blessed. See, he talked to them directly. Yeah. Come ye blessed. See, that let you know how special it was. He talked to them directly. Come ye blessed. Yeah. All that suffering that you went through. All that denying yourself. All that living for me. Come ye blessed. Yeah. This is your moment now. Yeah. You have not suffered in vain. Come ye, you blessed. I'm talking directly to you. Come be blessed. And you know what? They used to hand direction. Because why? They're sheep. They say, come be blessed. They, they, they used to. Because the scripture said, he said, come all that as heavenly. Yeah. He said, all. Oh. He said, all that weird and heavenly. And I'll give you rest. They used to take it all from me. Not the goat. They used to it. They used to it. They used to it. They used to it. He said, no man come to me and said, my father is drawn. They used to be drawn to God. They may fall, they still come back to God. No matter how far they get from God, they still come back to God. They used to it. They used to take it off from God. But when it comes down to the go, people in my brother. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungry. And he gave me meat. I was dirty, and he gave me drink. I was a stranger, and he took me in. Naked, and he told me. I was sick, and he visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when, when saw he thee, and angry, and hungry, and fed thee, a thirsty, and gave thee drink. When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, a naked and clothed thee? But when saw ye thee sick, a uh, imprisoned, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. You hear that? They would have the love of God. Doing the will of God. They didn't know who they were doing to. Yes. That's the, the problem with people that I'm going to run over you and go to Jesus. No, you not. I'm going to treat you any kind of way and I'm going to just go on to heaven. No, you not. He said, what you done to the least? What's the least? The one you did nothing of. The ones you don't even care about. What you do. I ain't talking about that love that you love your certain ones. I'm talking about the least of them. You don't take nothing of them. He said, what you done to the least of them? They didn't even know they was doing the will of God to somebody that represented to watch Christ. See, that's one thing I'm going to tell you about this. God set us up sometimes. He breaks people in situations so we be tested. To show if we truly have the love. It's not for the embarrassment to show you our shortcomings. Sometimes people.
people get in trouble to call you to show you that Jesus on the phone. Asking you for help. And not only is that they said they saw, they were able to feel. Not that they didn't be able to do it, they saw it and they were able. Those that were able, they saw it and they did something about it. You think you just gonna run on to Christ? Just treat anybody any kind of way? You're on your way to heaven? No! You gotta watch how you treat people. Why can't you talk to people? Stop saying somebody, you're going to be there for them, and they're not there. Stop saying that. You're going to watch because Christ put that test to show you what's in your heart. 